The Ancients' World Chapter 71, The Journey to Zenith City 9 Suddenly my hologram pad flickers back on and I see the static image of William. He is trying to say something, but there is too much interference. Soon the call cuts out and I'm left to my thoughts, he might have wanted to keep talking. We will be there soon, we have a few more gates to pass through and everything is going according to schedule. I make my way out of my mobile tent and tell the soldiers carrying it to put me down, I need to speak to the leader of this city before we use the next gate. Nelmorp is a lovely city, but so many new people have been arriving that it's making travel extremely difficult. The soldiers that are carrying my tent take a breather while I make my way to the mayor's office. While St. Tess Lucy makes her plans and prepares to mobilize her troops, Sarah is minutes out from Nelmorp. I have made great time and the sun should be rising any minute now, Nelmorp is in view and I can't help my fear at seeing mom after I ran from her last night. It's taken a while to get here, but the vast majority of my journey is done. The capital is a day away from Zenith so I shouldn't take long getting there once I'm done here. I travel for a little longer and I make it to the city gates, every player inside is wearing leather armor. Some are probably people wanting to hide their good gear. The copy-paste feature works really well when you want to hide your value. Most players only use the leather armor look so they don't stand out, the more you stand out the bigger target you are for pikers. So anyone that wants to keep their items uses the copy-paste system and makes their gear look low level. It really is a cool unspoken rule, keeps player killings low as long as nobody uses inspect on you. I wait in line to get into the city. Time passes and soon I'm at the guard who asks security questions. State your reason for coming to Nelmorp. This particular guard sounds very tired of dealing with us players. I should make this quick and I don't want to upset him. He looks at me with irritated eyes and rolls his wrist at me to tell me to hurry up. I'm here to meet up with my family. I don't have any other reason than that. He nods his head in a drone-like manner and tilts his head for me to continue in. I walk in and I can see thousands of players doing all sorts of things, it's going to be difficult to find my family, but there is two things I need to handle before I start searching. The first thing I want to do is write a letter to Amelia again, I did promise that I would write any chance I got. I make my way to the beautifully decorated building, you can count on the church having the best buildings. I walk up to it and enter the large doors, there is some nuns and others church workers here and there. I make my way over the message area and pick up a piece of paper and a pen. I wonder if I should tell her I'm going to Zenith to do my tear-up quest, I wouldn't doubt she'll ask me to swing by blue grass to say hello. After I'm done writing her a letter I need to head to the bank and get the gold that my shop has made. I should have accumulated 80 gold by now. I start writing and writing the updates about my journey. I hope you and the orphans are doing well. I've been busy myself if you have heard the announcements from the churches. I wanted to let you know that I'm doing fine and I wasn't hurt in my battle with the orcs. I want to give you a heads up that it might not be safe in blue grass if the orcs armies get too far. If that happens I'll come get you and the orphans and take you guys somewhere safe. Hopefully the war won't progress that far, but be ready just in case. Let me know if you guys need any more gold, I'll send some if you want. Signed your son. I pick up an envelope and neatly fold the message up, then I stick it in the envelope. I walk over to the magic delivery system and place the destination to Blue Grass and recipient Amelia Zirn. I watch the letter disappear in a flash of light and leave the slot I put it in. Now since that's all handled I can head to the bank and fill my empty pockets, many of the players who have been playing since the start have accumulated enough money to serve their needs. I will have money that I won't know what to do with. The bank is usually built close to the churches so people are compelled to donate, so it won't be too far. I make my way down the commercial district and I can see a packed building, I look at its sign and it says bank. Looks like players have already started the grind for currency, I'm impressed that so many are eager to level up and leave the starting city. I look at the packed place and can't help laughing a little. Players are arguing with each other and hurling insults. Everyone wants some personal space in this small building, but you won't get any. 
I also make my way inside and see the stress on the bank tellers, this is probably a daily thing for them. I go to the back of a line myself and begin to wait for my turn. While Sarah waits for the line to move, there is a bloody battle happening in Alsoma. The youngest princess of Alsoma, Princess Fiona, is locked in her room as she hears the guards fighting outside of her bedroom. Father ordered me to my room soon after the monsters arrived at our gates, I have heard screams and smelt fire coming from outside the castle walls. Now I hear fighting in the hallway to my room, the guards are also fighting to defend me. If it were my order I would have sent them home to their families. There is no way we can beat a horde by ourselves. I hear the fighting and clashing of weapons stop outside my room. I look into the mirror before my fate arrives, I wish I had the courage to end my own life. I don't wish to die by my own hand, all I can do is force these monsters to kill me. Soon the door to my room opens and I hear the heavy footsteps of a monster, I turn to look at my doom and see a giant orc. I think I will end my life on second thought, I refuse to have that fate. I bear the dagger on my desk and go straight for my neck, however it's stopped by an unseen force. We can't have the beautiful princess taking what's ours. I hear a twisted voice from behind the orc and see some monster that can use magic. She is all yours, just don't do too much damage. General Arise likes royalty. My skin crawls as the giant orc makes his way to me, I try and try to end my own life. The magic he used is stopping me however. Soon the orc is in front of me. He picks me up and tosses me on the bed while he rips my dress off. Soon he undoes his loincloth and a vile thing fills my sight. I can't stop the tears from falling before my most valuable thing is taken. While chaos and death ensue at Alsoma, the Saintess is currently talking to the mayor. I get you want to use the teleporter Madame Saintess, but it needs to finish charging. It should be done in a few hours, just wait a little bit longer. I can't really force them to speed up this process, all I can do is wait. They have no control over the charging time so it isn't their fault, we will be a few hours late. However it's nothing to worry about. While the NPCs do their normal things the players hear a world announcement that is disturbing. Worldwide announcement, the capital city Alsoma and its country has fallen. The monster horde has entirely decimated any resistance shown. The monster forces will have a boost in soldiers from the capture of women used as reproductive cattle. The orcs armies and monster forces grow stronger. There is no cheering coming from the players, only quiet whispers that silently discuss the revolting reality that the war brings. Soon after the players get notified the NPCs get a magic announcement from the church. Countless NPCs bring their hands together and silently pray for Alsoma and its people. Now that Alsoma has fallen, Saint Tess Lucy has a new mission. She is currently on her way back to the tent. I can't believe we were too late, William said they were two days out. Not attacking right then and there, it's only been a little bit since the hologram meeting ended. Now it makes sense why he tried to call back, they must have used some sort of magic to interfere with the transmission. Looks like we failed, I make my way back to the troops and prepare a new mission objective. I stand on my carryable platform and look out at my soldiers. We just received terrible news, with the fall of Alsoma this becomes a recon and rescue. No longer a defense, if we find any survivors be sure to use sleep magic on them. It's more than likely any survivors will be traumatized. Get ready to move out in a few hours. I give my new orders and return into my tent, I guess no matter what we did we couldn't save them. If I get a chance to exact revenge for the ones captured I won't hesitate, men can't understand what it's like. I intend to save as many as I can, and I hope that I can save at least one. Chapter 72, The Journey to Zenith City X I listen to the announcement go off, looks like the kingdom of Alsoma has fallen, all the starting cities in that area are now unusable. The populations of other starter cities will rise and all the people who haven't left the starting cities in Alsoma will be transported to a new random starting city till they can leave it. The armies of our adversaries are going to cause hell for a while, 
I know I won't be strong enough to stop the army by myself and the best of the best players are only around level 35 right now. When the players begin to reach level 50 and do their tier up quests many will probably join the war, after they do their mana aura quests of course. So for now the NPCs are on their own, and I'm sure a lot of powerful NPCs will be coming out of the shadows to make sure the humanoid race doesn't die. I wouldn't be surprised if Wilmer is already working on plans of his own, he is the leading magic user on defense magic. Many kingdoms will be seeking him out and offering huge rewards for his help. I have an idea of what I might be able to do to end this war, but I'll need Fenrir's help. A simple idea really, but I should sit and contemplate on it. In the meantime I'm going to have to focus on other things, like getting to the front of this line. I don't know how much longer everyone is going to wait for me, if only I could get to the front of this line faster. I look at the clock they have on the way and see that 30 minutes have passed and this line has barely moved. Being in a society has many disadvantages, one of them being lines. I can't complain too much, I have a lot of great things going for me. I'll sound like a spoiled child if I have all these great things and I complain about a line, and I don't want to be that person. I should be getting a turn soon, so maybe I should think about something else. You know, with your height I bet I wouldn't have any problems with the quest I'm on. I suddenly hear a famine voice speak to me, I turn around to the voice and see no one. I look down and see a very short girl, she is shorter than my mom. She must be an extrovert starting up a conversation with a random person. I squint at her and she rolls her eyes in annoyance. Play along if you want this line to disappear. She whispers her reasoning to me, I think I get the plan. She must want to talk about something that will get people to leave the bank. I nod my head slightly and cross my arms. What kind of quest are you on? I doubt there is a quest that requires height. I might as well make it believable to the people listening, she doesn't like my improvised thoughts. She goes on to explain in a medium to loud voice her quest is one anyone can finish with a huge reward, but since she is so short she can't climb the mountain the quest is located. She explains the terrain is too rough for her and that she had to abandon the quest, she made it sound convincing enough. At least to my standards, soon many of the players dart out of the bank and the line disappears. Many of these players must be new if they believed that pile of crap, I turn around without saying another word. Hey. You could at least say thanks. I ignore her and walk up to the teller, she goes to a new teller booth that opened up. I look at the male at the booth I'm at and he just sighs, must be because of my treatment towards her. She benefited just as much as I did, so I see no reason to talk further. It's dangerous getting involved with people who trick like that, even if it's to get to the front of a line. I take a sigh and think maybe I was a little rude, no point saying anything now. I'm here to collect funds from a shop I have. Account's name is Slayer's Earn. The man goes into the back and does his business. In the meantime said girl looks over at me with the news of me owning a shop. I can already tell what's about to happen, she is about to speak to me. Instead of letting her speak I give an answer fast. No, I'm not adding you to my friends list. No, I don't own a shop. Yes, you misheard me. Now go back to minding your business and I'll mind mine. I don't feel bad for being rude earlier anymore, it's obvious what she was going to ask. I look in her direction as the man is still gone and I see disbelief on her face. I guess she isn't used to being treated like this most men would do anything for a pretty gamer girl. I'm not one of those men, I couldn't care any less than I do now about them. If I wanted to hang out with a gamer girl in game I would, I will not stoop to the level of worshipping them. I believe men should be more sophisticated than that. You are one of the meanest people I have ever met. Why would you treat a beautiful young woman like that? Did your mother not teach you how to treat a woman? This noisy girl is getting on my nerves, I just sigh and ignore her again. That seems to make her mad even more, I guess she is one of those that want a reaction. Soon my teller comes back with two heavy sacks of gold. You have 88 gold pieces ready to take, 
let me know if there is anything else you need help with. I take the sacks of gold and place them in my player inventory. Please feel free to bring your requests back. I walk off as the teller tries to retain a wealthy customer in me, no sense in staying here any longer. Time to go meet up with my family, however as I'm about to leave I'm stopped by the same annoying girl holding me by my left arm. If this wasn't a city I would end her right now, too bad the guards will throw me in jail till she resp ons and gets her stuff back. I look her dead in the eye with anger, she quickly lets go and composes herself. I won't let you leave till you apologize to me. You are obviously much higher level than I am and if you don't want to apologize then help me with something. I turn around and leave, this type of person is the most troublesome. They bring nothing other than headaches and problems. If I ever get strong enough to beat you up, you can be sure I'll pummel you. I make my way to the area that has the cheapest things for sale, this is where most new players hang out. The rest of my family is sure to be here. After I walk around for a little while I notice the familiar face of my sister, at least I found one of them. Hey sis, seems like I found you. She jumps in surprise since she was window shopping some fancy clothes that you see noble women wear. She turns around and gives an annoyed look, always the jumpy one. Didn't mean to scare you. Where is everyone else? She takes her attention off of the dresses in the windows and turns to me. I think she is still upset with me about giving her a spook. They are at the local blacksmith looking at prices. I came here because there is no way we can afford that gear with our measly funds, it feels just like when we were poor. I guess that would be a feeling that comes back, being poor becomes sour once you experience being rich. I'm glad that they are looking at the most important things in cities. Come in, I was done here anyway. I can show you around town on our way to them. I can't remember the last time I got to do something like this with Haley. I hold out my elbow in a gesture for her to grab it, I don't want any horny men thinking they can just talk to my sister. I think that's a great idea Haley. She grabs my elbow and holds it with a smile. Don't worry, I'll keep the fugly ones away. I say this in a joking tone and it works rather well, my sister laughs a good amount. We soon travel around the city on our way to the blacksmith to meet up with the other three members of our family, I'm happy that Haley is having fun. Too bad I won't be able to stay with them while they go on their own adventures, if I know Haley she will eventually split up from mom and dad to do her own thing. That will only leave Marcus for my mom and dad to care for, and knowing her she will do it soon. Chapter 73, The Journey to Zenith City 11 Walking around Nelmore isn't something I did in my old future, if I actually invested in spending some time here I'd have learned that this city is pretty fun. The streets are packed with players and people alike. Even though Ancient's world isn't as technologically advanced as ours, the few years players were playing in Ancient's world the tech made leaps and bounds. The airships in the capital cities along with merchant cities are one of the inventions that happened before we arrived. They are brilliantly creative in my opinion, other wonderful inventions will come to Ancient's world in time. I always found it strange that airships were invented even though the teleportation grid existed. There is one problem with teleportation, only people of high level or the Adventurers Guild can use it. If merchants or regular people wanted to use it they would have to pay obscene fees. This is why the airship was invented. While not nearly as convenient it's a cheap alternative to the teleportation gates. Speaking of said gates we are coming up on one now, and there is a big crowd around it for some reason. None of the people around look like they can afford it, but they are there anyway. My sister also notices the big crowd and wants to take a gander. In all the time I've been in Nelmorp, I've never seen so many people by the teleportation gate. Mom and Dad checked the prices and said we will be walking everywhere for a while, so I don't understand why so many are around. Haley is an observant one, she is right about the prices. We fully stop and I look at the tent that is being held up, the crest of the St. Tess Lucy is on it. This gate must be part of a chain that heads to Alsoma. Seems that the church is too late as well, I wonder how many NPCs have died in the kingdom of Alsoma. 
they are a smaller kingdom compared to Zenith or Salamander, so their population is much lower. Zenith probably has around 100 to 120 million NPCs, all Soma would have around 20 to 30 million. The Orc armies choose a much weaker target to get this war started, and now their forces will increase because of their evil methods of reproduction. If I do get a chance to end the war I will, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. Killing one Orc general is different than taking on multiple strong leaders that are several tiers higher than I am. I can honestly say that a world as hard as this one would bring much pain to the hearts of its people, and my world wouldn't know that pain. Not on the scale it's being presented, while I'm not a native of this world. I do love it very much, and I hate to see good people suffer from others' random acts of evil. While in my thoughts I totally ignored anything that was going on around me, many people are cheering now and I don't know why. I bring my focus off my thoughts and back to the situation. I can't believe we got to see the same Tess. I can't wait to brag to the rest at the inn. I hear comments like this come from both players and NPCs. No sense in staying any longer, whatever the Saintess and her forces are doing will be too hard for my help. I don't want to risk my identity yet, despite everything that is happening to the NPCs. Come on Haley, let's go meet up with Mom and Dad. I'm sure they are only waiting for us at this point. I also have surprises for everyone once we meet up, so the sooner the better. Haley nods her head and regroups my elbow, we start our walk towards the blacksmith and the closer I get the scarier it feels. Mom must be in a bad mood and looks to cause me some pain, hopefully she doesn't try to hurt me. If she does it in front of a guard she will get thrown in jail to cool off. While things are happening all over Ancient's world a new kingdom has come into being, seemingly overnight as well. Many of the leaders of the surrounding countries are surprised by this it usually take years to build a kingdom and an economy to keep it healthy. What really makes this kingdom special is that only players have been seen spawning and actually staying there, its beginner cities have taken both the old players from Alsoma and newly spawning players. The only place with NPCs is the capital, and its ruler is a queen by the name of Aurea C. The I. The name of this kingdom is one unique as well. The kingdom of Avalon has risen from the story quest that Sarah completed, and now that construction has just finished its time. Worldwide announcement, a new kingdom has come to Ancient's world. This kingdom is almost exclusive to the players. NPCs are free to migrate it and settle in this new kingdom. Players from the country of Alsoma have been relocated to the country of Avalon. Once players reach level 100 they must go to Avalon for their tier up quests. The announcement rings out many times over for the people of Ancient's world. Many players are blowing up the forums since everyone knows where they must go for their tier 2 quests. One of the more influential guilds Cloudless Sky is having a meeting with Willow Tree, and they are of course discussing the tournament. Wilted Rose is currently having a private discussion with Dark Blade about the length of this tournament. Dark Blade and I can agree that this tournament is taking too long to complete, and while we sit here and fight over items other players are passing us. I've gotten everything on our guild's list so there is no longer a need to stay, I'm pulling my guild out of the competition. If you were wise Dark Blade you would leave too, everyone is passing our best members. I don't intend to fall behind the masses, the best of the best solo players are already in the mid-30s. While everyone in this tournament is still early 20s. He gives me a bitter look, he must be upset about me winning the legacy class. It's too bad I have to complete a difficult quest by myself, almost makes it worthless to me. He leans back in his chair and looks over to the empty one, Sir Erickson is absent from this meeting again. You can leave, I would too if I got the legacy class alone. You on the other hand got everything on your list, your guild made out so much better than everyone else here. So I think you understand why my guild has to stay in, we will catch up eventually. I wish you the best in catching up with all the other players. Dark Blade gets up and walks away, I'm left all alone with my thoughts. What's on my mind at the moment is this new kingdom and its importance to the players. When players start reaching level 100 we'll be heading to Avalon, and it would be smart to get any information on it. 
while the major guilds continue to fight over the items, my guild will have the chance to get ahead of all of them. I wouldn't be surprised if new guilds break into the top 20 with so many not making any progress, this is an advantage for the solo players. They don't have to deal with guilds, and that is a major bonus. While Wilted Rose continues to plan out her next move Sarah is approaching the door to the blacksmith shop. I can feel an ominous aura coming from behind this door, and I seem to be the only one that feels anything. I look over to my sister and I can see the smile on her face. Are you happy that I'm probably going to get attacked? Some sister you are. She laughs at my comment and all I can do is sigh. I wouldn't be laughing if the situation was reversed, so I guess she just wants to see me suffer. She sees my sour expression and tries to stop laughing, all that does is make her choke up trying to hold it in. After a few gasps and coughs she finally stops laughing at my expense, talk about a disappointing older sibling. I could be much more cruel to her if I wanted. I'm sorry Sarah, but it's nice to finally see the perfect child make a mistake for once. You don't know how hard it was watching you be so calm and easy growing up, I would always be compared to you, it made my life horrible. I guess I can understand that, she isn't wrong in a sense. I find it hard to believe they would compare us though, I never imagined my parents doing something like that. I can no longer deny the inevitable, something is going to happen on the other side of this door and I'm scared. Chapter 74, The Journey to Zenith City 12 I open the door to the blacksmith shop and I can feel the tension that my mother is giving off, I walk inside and notice Marcus and Dad checking out some weapons. I don't see Mom anywhere, but I can feel a disturbance. Hey Dad! I'm glad to see you guys learning about the important shops. Where is mom? I call out to dad who is swinging a sword and testing its weight, he turns at the sound of my voice and smiles. However, his smile soon fades and his eyes look to something behind me. I turn my head to see what he's looking at and I come face to face with mom. She has an expression that shows happiness, but she is giving off the feeling of annihilation. She moves a little closer and I flinch on instinct. Why are you so scared sweetie? It's just mommy. Shivers go up my spine and fear envelopes me. I just want you to know that I'm not mad anymore. I understand that you have your own things to deal with. She says the words calmly and evenly, but there is a hidden malice behind her words. So mind telling me what's so important that you had to ditch your mom? I'm sure you wouldn't abandon me for no good reason. Now she sounds very mad. I look at the other players and NPCs in the shop and they look scared as well. I slowly back up putting distance between my mom and me, she matches my every step to make sure I can't get away though. Hey mom, it's so good to see you. I just got here. Her aura gets more serious and the happy face she had is now gone. Look, I know you're mad mom. Please just listen to reason. She begins to ball up her fist and move closer. I continue to move backwards till my back is against the wall. If you hit me I'm calling the guards. I can't stop the words from leaving my mouth, I wouldn't get hurt by anything she does to me. The feeling of fear is overwhelming that part of me though. When she hears those words she brings her fist up to hit me, and I see her best angry face with purple cheeks from how mad she is. She knows all about the guard situation so that is stopping her. She drops her fist and beings to tear me a new one. How dare you threaten me you ungrateful boy. I'm your mother and you would still throw me in jail after all you put me through. She is doing a good job at restraining herself from using violence, but I may have made my situation worse by saying that. I can't believe you would even say such a thing. I carried you in me for nine months and birthed you. Is this how you'll repay me? by hurting my feelings and throwing me to the side. I think she is letting all her frustrations out since she couldn't catch me when we had our chase. I'm starting to feel bad in all honesty. I've never been yelled at like this before, but it's funny watching my mom mad. She isn't the type that has an angry look, it's still making me afraid though. Instead of doing nothing I decide to do something, I interrupt my mom's verbal attacks and bring her into a hug instead. 
she goes from 100 to 0 instantly, and is now quiet. Since she is so much shorter than me I have to bend down pretty far to make sure her chin sits on my shoulder, she hugs me back tight and I can hear her cry a little. I'm really sorry mom. I didn't know spending time with me was so important to you. She cries harder after I say that, after letting her get her pain out for a good few minutes I finally pull away and look at her. She has red puffy eyes and is sniffling, I really put her through a lot. She cleans the wetness from her eyes and begins to cheer up. Oh, I can't stay mad at my baby. You will always be my sweet pumpkin pie. I can't stop my face from turning red in embarrassment, talk about a nickname you want to disappear from the annals of history. The other players in the shop snicker at the mention of my nickname, I clear my throat to help my fluster. I get behind mom and push her over to the rest of our family, I look at them all stand together in their beginner armor and weapons. A feeling of true happiness spreads through me, I hope they are all adjusting well to ancient's world. Mom looks like she just remembered something as I see a light go off in her eyes. Let's head over to the fountain and take a family photo. I want to get this moment on camera since you won't be staying with us long. Mom gives no time for objections and is already halfway out the door, we all follow her and line up in front of the fountain in the center of the city. Mom then proceeds to struggle with finding the screenshot tab in the player interface. Sarah can you help me, I can't find the camera. I walk up beside her and walk her through the steps, then she starts looking through a camera only she can see and lines it up towards the rest us the family. She puts it on the countdown and we both hurry into position. She is the only one that got any notification about it, I watch her lose herself in the photos she took. I turn my attention back to dad since mom is in her own world, I walk over and sit next to him on the fountain. So are you guys planning anything soon? I ask a simple question, but since me and my dad think in similar ways he gets the meaning behind my question. He sighs and looks up at the beautiful clouds that are free of pollution from jets and chemical dusting. One thing I'll always hate about my world is the government spraying crops with chemicals, they are fine for the plants. The sky clarity is sacrificed, we had to do something to feed the high population though. I look up with dad and enjoy the freedom that ancient's world brings, nothing about this world is sick like our world. In all honesty our world is slowly dying not in the sense of it can't sustain life. More along the lines it is losing its beauty. Your mother and I are taking Marcus with us on our adventures together. Haley told us she plans to take off on her own once we are done here in Nelmorp. That only leaves your decision, what do you plan to do? It was nice of them to wait for me and ask me what I want to do instead of just assuming I'll tag along with them. I'm sure mom was hoping for me to stick around but I got my own things to do. I look over to my mom and Haley as they go through the photos. She must have sent copies to everyone on her friends list. Speaking of that I'll need to add them. I'm on my own quest right now, so I won't be tagging along with you and mom. Even though that may disappoint her, I have progress to make. Dad nods his head in understanding and brandishes a smile. I'll add you guys to my friends list so we can keep in regular contact with player messages, I also have surprises for each of you. Well, more like great information. We continue to talk for a little while Haley and mom do what girls do. I want to give them information on great classes, Marcus has a chance to get a legacy magic class since I remember instructions on how to get one. Mom and Dad are both swordsman class wielders so I know where two legacy classes reside. Haley has chosen a duelist, which is why her first weapon is a rapier. I know of a legendary class that is perfect for her. I have a sick feeling in my gut making my family super strong, it's the gamer part of me shouting keep the balance. It'll only benefit them though, the only thing I gain is a family that is strong enough to help each other when needed. That is all I can really ask for as a son. It's still early morning so that means I can hang out with them for a few more hours, I want to leave for Zenith by nightfall. As I hang out with my family in the best inn at Nelmorp, Giovanni's pub, I go on to play card games and explain each of the ways they can get the classes. 
They all write down the instructions in their player journals for each individual class, we spend many hours having fun and talking as we go from card game to card game. I didn't know mom and dad could pick up on games such as The Shattering, it's one of the most popular fantasy card games among players. Every card is given a power level and you collect better cards from either players who wager or quests, it's not big yet. In a few months it will be the pastime in Ancients World, many have compared it to the old vintage card game from over 200 years ago called Gwent. I played it once and it's very similar, if you know how to play Gwent then you know how to play The Shattering. Chapter 75, The Journey to Zenith City 13 Sitting here and playing cards with my family is all well and fun, but night is approaching soon and I want to get a move on to Zenith. On the other hand, I don't know the next time I'll see them in game. So I'll hang out until everyone else is ready for the goodbye portion of this meetup, I look around the inn as my family is playing one on one. I'm the odd man out this time, I can see plenty of people along with some dwarves and elves. The most surprising is the lizardmen in my view. While they aren't considered humanoid they are extremely peaceful with humanity. Their country is located in one of the larger oceans called Requiem, it's home to many peaceful aquatic and reptilian races. I haven't seen one so far inland before, and he seems to be having a jolly time with other humans. Lizardmen are great warriors despite their peaceful natures, and also adepts at fire magic. It does beg the question about why he is here especially in the city of Nelmorp. I'll be back in a few minutes, I have to satisfy my curiosity. Don't wait up all right. None of them seem to hear me since they are heavily invested in their games. I make my way over to the small group and notice that the NPCs around him are low-class adventurers. By the look on their badges none of them are higher than F rank, and F rank is pretty average. I'm not very fond of the adventurers' guild, you could say I almost despise them. They are not an organization I agree with, they treat their lower ranked members like fodder and their higher ranked members like kings. This is not how something as large as the Adventurers Guild should act, and in the five years I played, they never once changed. I won't talk to the lizardman, I just want to get a good look at him. This is the first time I've seen one up close before. Too bad this is our last day together Tokil, it's been a blast escorting you this far. I hope that you remember us when you resume your journey after Zenith. From what I hear this lizardman's name is Tokil, and he is also heading to Zenith. Must be an ambassador going kingdom to kingdom expressing their willingness to help in the war or something, it's that or he was exiled from his home. I find that the system announcements are racists in a way when it said all non-humanoid creatures have united against humanity. It failed to include the ones that are on peaceful terms with humanity. That makes me question why it would do that, it's different for the NPCs so they heard something else. Why is the system telling players half-truths, and making mass confusion a common thing? I can tell by the looks on the players' faces around the inn that they are wondering why a non-humanoid creature is perfectly safe. I just watch patiently as some of the players are getting ready for a confrontation, the ones desperate for EXP or items see this as an opportunity. After a couple of minutes one player finally gets the nerve to walk up and talk to them, he looks around level 10. It's considered rude among the players to inspect each other while in the cities, that's why that small woman from before didn't inspect me. I refocus on the situation playing out in front of me, this player must be really desperate. The lizardman is probably around level 45 to 50, and the adventurers around are of a similar level. Why is this non-humanoid creature not being killed right now because of the war? He looks like he's got some good items on him. When he said that, the player that didn't care suddenly gained interest. Smart move making other interested, but it won't make a difference with such level disparity. One of the adventurers hanging out around Tokil takes out his axe and gets ready to kill. Before he can strike Tokil stops him, now that is something you don't see every day. An NPC sticking up for a player, Tokil is someone of high character and principles. Matches up with his species defining traits perfectly. The adventurer puts his axe away and gives the player a death glare, while this is happening Tokil begins to speak. 
while my race is non-humanoid, the lizardmen have always be peaceful with humanity and others like them. I'm here with one of my good friends who is a dwarf, if you don't believe me ask him. He is around 120 years old and has great knowledge of the history between my people and yours. Spoken like a true politician, he is definitely an ambassador. He is here with a dwarf as well, must be hanging out with the other dwarves by the barrels of alcohol. Say what you will about dwarves, they know how to drink. Many of the players who were interested in the items Tokil was carrying soon backed off. Players are immortal but we think losing a level is worse than dying. That is a dramatization, but the anger and screams some players release when they lose a level convinces you otherwise. If you do wish to start something with me you will have to deal with the Adventurer's Guild, but you would have to beat my friends here first. Getting on the bad side of the Adventurer's Guild isn't something a player should do, even at higher levels it's wise to stay off their kill list. They have some of the strongest NPCs in Ancients World. When Tokil said that all interest in him fell to zero, most players know their limits and are smart about the way they play. It's widely considered idiotic to intentionally antagonize stronger beings, and most players are smart. Nobody wants a target on their back that big, my curiosity has been satisfied enough so I head over to the bar and order some food. While it doesn't fill me in real life it does taste great. While I'm ordering food the lizardman decides this is the moment to get food also, he is next to me ordering as well. He is much taller than I am, despite the fact I'm around 6'3". You didn't look at me the same way the other new people did. I can't help asking why, it's known throughout the lands that new people are notorious for their greed and lust to grow stronger. Seems Tokil is much more observant than I anticipated. I see no reason to deny a conversation. This is the first time I get to talk to a lizardman. My food is set in front of me along with a glass of beer, I slide the beer over to Tokil. I know the history and relationship the lizardmen have with humanity. I just wanted to know why you came so far inland, and this is also the first time I have seen one of you in person. My best guess is you're an ambassador speaking for the lizardmen, and that's why Zenith is your next stop. He looks at me impressed my deduction must have been spot on. He picks up the beer and necks the thing, while I'm not from the EU I always wanted to say that. He slams the empty glass down and releases a satisfied sigh, he then receives his food as well. You are very knowledgeable for a new person, and by the look of the blade you carry you are powerful too. I won't be so rude as to ask for your level, but may you share. I wonder why he wants to know. My instincts and years of solo play are telling me not to tell him. He isn't a player though, and it's not like he is going to find out about my class. I do wonder what his level is as well, while my guess of 45 to 50 might be correct it's still a guess. I look over to my family and see they are still deeply invested in their games. I have time to talk, and I don't have to worry about holding up my family. I'm on my way to Zenith myself. I have a tear up quest to do. I hit level 60 not long ago and all new people have to head to the capital city of the country they appeared in. I'm heading out before nightfall, while I wait for time to pass I'm hanging out with my family. I point my head in the direction of my family and he looks to them, he picks up a chicken wing and digs into it with his reptilian teeth and extended face. He looks over to the dwarves getting drunk by the barrels of beer. My traveling companion is the oldest dwarf over there. The one that's wearing the green chest plate, he is an expert blacksmith representing the Dwarves Smith Alliance. We met up some time ago and decided to travel together till our quests are complete. We have the same destinations so it worked out. An expert blacksmith is very rare, and he is also a representative of the Dwarves Smith Alliance. They are the best crafters in the world but I doubt they have any legendary blacksmiths. I don't regret giving up that adamantine metal, was never going to use it. I have a great idea myself, and I wonder if Tokil will be interested. Chapter 76, The Journey to Zenith City 14 My idea isn't one I'd usually get since I'm so solo heavy, but a lizardman and dwarf as travel companions for the time being would be nice. It won't be a permanent thing 
but fighting monster of such a high level near Zenith will prove tough without being tier 1 yet. No point in waiting any longer to ask, now is a golden opportunity. Why don't all of us travel to Zenith, while Zenith isn't that far from here I know that the areas around the capital is full of powerful tier 1 creatures. That's probably the reason your escorts are stopping here in Nelmorp isn't it? Tokil looks at me with questioning eyes, as if certifying the offer as genuine. He smiles and seems satisfied with what he sees. This party will only last till we get to Zenith, I'll have a new quest that will take me somewhere far from Zenith most likely. He nods his head in understanding, Manaora is one of the most studied subjects in Ancients world. Every NPC knows that once you complete your tier up quest you'll need to do your mana aura quest next. Traveling with the two of them will increase the odds of getting there faster, it's a day's walk from Nelmorp. So we can take our time and talk, we can ensure none of us die on the dangerous roads. Since the war has ravaged the country of Zenith many monsters have gotten bold, I wouldn't doubt the roads are closed for all official travel. Tokil hasn't given an answer yet but by the look on his scaly face he is ready to answer. I think that is a good idea, while I'm tier 1, my dwarf friend isn't. You are more than welcome to fill the role he would have had to play, I'll definitely count on your help. Looks like I got myself a party, parties work different with NPCs than with players. Players can use the system to divvy up EXP and rewards, with NPCs you don't share EXP. In a way it's better for levels, but worse for gear. I'll go and let my short friend know, when do you wish to head out? I recommend we wait till tomorrow so he can sober up. Guess that means I'm staying the night in Nelmorp. That's fine by me, gives me some time to spend with my family. My companion and I are staying in this inn, will you be as well? I look over to the barkeep and get his attention, I lay down the required amount of gold and he throws me a key. I hold it up for Tokil to see and he just chuckles, he finishes his food and gets up. He heads over to his dwarf friend who is too drunk to even care that he'll be traveling with a new person. I watch Tokil go over to his escorts and begin chatting with them again. I head back over to my family and take a seat as well, it'll be nice to fill the silence of a lonely travel. It will only last till Zenith, while I do party up sometimes. I'm a solo player at heart who knows what will happen on the road there. It will be nice to have some backup. As Sarah hangs out at Giovanni's pub with his family and has a good time, there is a meeting in the holy city. The one leading the meeting this time is Saint Tess Lucy, she is reporting on the state of Alsoma's capital city. I can't believe the carnage this new enemy is capable of. The bodies of men and young boys lined the streets, and all the females no matter how old or young were taken. It makes me sick to my stomach that this has happened, a woman should never have to go through such a thing. The worst part of it all is we don't even know where they took them, and by the look of the capital I can say they tramped over every city they came across. I'm currently looking through a hologram at the rest of the attendants and this time I see members of the coalition. I take a breath to clear my head and prepare the news, this is going to be more ammo for the elf queen and her agenda. There was nothing left and all fatalities were of the male gender. No female bodies were found and barely any monster corpses were uncovered. It's safe to say that the country of Alsoma has fallen, and it would be wise to fortify the borders and place in new emergency alarms no matter the cost. Many just nod their heads in agreement and stay silent. The queens in the room look like they are about to be sick, I would be too if I was in their shoes. I hear a voice that ticks me off more than anyone else's. The elf queen Syndra begins to speak about her only demand once again. This is why I think it's fair for us to receive the son of Archangel Michael. The women of my country are the most coveted in the world, and I will surely lose many in this war. I want fair compensation for their sacrifice, and I expect it. My blood boils even more as she shuts off her hologram so no one can dispute her at this moment. I look over at Alex and he flinches at my angry face. I will not tolerate such disrespect and neither should he. He just sighs and sits in his seat, he takes off his hat and sets it down. He takes a hard and individual look at everyone in this room, the fairies aren't here anymore. 
They don't want anything to do with the war, if the armies come for their country and kingdom they will unleash Fenrir. Alex begins to speak about the main goal of this cooperation. While the elves and fairies' help will be missed, I know that if we all work together this will be a swift war. I'll need all of the countries here to open their borders to church occupation, we will cover the cost for the emergency alarms. I'm about to protest and make sure that the kingdoms are the ones that pay, but I'm beat to it. Gregory stands up and crosses his arms. The kingdoms will pay for the emergency alarms, we'll be giving full cooperation in this war. Is that understood everyone? He looks around to the kings and queens both young and old, many have sour faces from the prices. None dispute Gregory's words though. I'm certain that your daughters and wives would agree that the price is small to pay for their safety. Many of the males' faces pale at the thought of losing their wives and daughters like that. Same goes for the queens and their daughters, Gregory showed them what was really important. He sits down and I watch a newly crowned king stand up, Baron Jackson has become the new ruler if Zenith. I guess calling him King Jackson is in order. You can be sure that Zenith will help in any way it can but with the recent war all we can do is afford the emergency alarm. We won't be able to spare any troops since we are rebuilding the country at its foundations. I understand and agree with his decisions he'll make a great and wise ruler for Zenith, but many of the other rulers in the room don't think it's fair. I'm tempted to turn off my hologram and let them argue it out all they want, but I care too much to do that. While this is happening in Ancients' world, JNX is having a private discussion with the rest of the investors. The one leading this conversation is Jericho, he is the one better with words after all. You will all give as much money as we say. None of it has any value anymore, so stop being so damn greedy and help us save lives. I slam my fist on the table and look at the sickly pale faces of my investors and shareholders. I need to get the point that money has no value on their heads only then will they help. I watch them all pull out their phones and start transferring money to the JNX's account. I'm glad that you all have let go of your money for the greater good, and when the time comes many will know about what you have done to save lives. I don't know if that will make the mood better, but it should ease their hearts. I end the call and head back over to the lab, there has been a new development and not a good one. I stand next to my friend Xander and look out into the room full of technicians and specialists helping in this crisis. So is it as bad as you say it it? Xander said he has some news that will throw a wrench into our efforts saving as many lives as we can. The human population is around 17 billion, and only around 5.5 are playing right now. The homeless and penniless can already be counted as dead and that's around 2 billion. So we are missing around 10 billion people who haven't gotten on yet. It's time to hear the bad news now, and bad news it is. Angelus is trying to speed up the collision, and we have stopped her for now. We can't forever though, and I'm certain by the next week or so the countdown timer will shrink massively. This is something that will kill billions, I waste no time and rush to my office to get the UN on. If we are to reach our goal of saving 10 billion out of the 17 we need all the factories in the world working on this. My and Xander's creation of Angelus has truly doomed us all, and we will have to pay for it someday. I just pray I can find a way to keep my family safe after I'm good and dead from my crimes against humanity. Chapter 77, The Journey to Zenith City 15 The inn is even more packed than before now that it's the time NPCs get off the day shift. I look around Giovanni's pub and see plenty more NPCs and players. I'm surprised that NPCs are capable of tolerating so many player in one location, and the barkeep won't turn them away since they are paying customers. I think the funniest part of all this is more players have started playing the shattering. More and more began to watch my family play, soon players and NPCs alike were having fun and also learning to play. They had to borrow some decks from others but many don't fully grasp how important this game will get. At least the tension from earlier is gone, the inn is getting kind of loud and I'm not fond of such volumes. I step outside to catch some fresh air and stop my ears from ringing, I look at the well-crafted road that is illuminated by the warm sun and see some couples and guards walking to their homes, most businesses aren't closed yet. 
Shifts are changing though, and I'm positive the evening shift is getting ready for work. I lean against the cool stone wall and think about everything that's happening. The biggest thing on my mind is JNX, while they are planning something it's hard to guess what. In the five years I played many truths were discovered about Ancients World, and some of them more disturbing than others. While we could never get JNX to admit it, many theorized that Ancients World was in fact another world that did exist. There is tons of lore that players eventually found that hinted at this, but JNX never responded to such rumors. When Ancients World real name was discovered it confirmed the theory for many. Gaia is the name of the world players called Ancients World for years, I have thought about this before when I made my wish to come back. Now that the system is acting different and JNX is in a panic I can assume that something is happening. It can't be something so drastic to create a reaction like this though, why would JNX risk such dangerous consequences? The answer hits me like a bolt of lightning, they risked it because it was worth trillions of UWDs. I can't say for certain about what's happening, but I know that being as strong as I can be is important. Along with securing the safety for my family, in terms of goals I have hit them all. I just can't shake my instincts that something bad will happen, and my instincts are rarely wrong about this sort of thing. I continue to think and ponder other things, and I'm soon interrupted by a familiar voice. I look in the direction and see nobody, I remember how short she is and I look down to meet her annoyed eyes. I asked you a question. Are you just going to ignore me like the jerk you are? She doesn't know what a real jerk is, many would prefer jerks ignore you instead of pay attention to you. I just raise my head and try to erase her from ruining my train of thought. Looks like you haven't changed since I met you earlier this morning. Why are you at my favorite hangout place, I meet my new friends here all the time. I don't need to know these things about her, I don't even know her name. She doesn't seem to get the hint and decides to lean on the same wall as I do. You don't like to talk much do you? Is it because you are so rude with your words that you drive people off, or is it because you don't like girls? I'm starting to get annoyed here, this girl obviously has some problems in her head if she goes around talking like this to everyone. I roll my eyes at her and just sigh, she gets pretty pissed at my lack of care for her words. I decide to answer her question with one of my favorite quotes. They say the more a man talks, the less he thinks. After meeting you I can see it applies to women as well. She gets red in the face after that sly comeback, I don't usually talk to people in Ancients world and I do that for a reason. Everyone wants what others have, be that information, gear, and items, or just pure jealousy because someone has a better class than you. If you want to go in, you can rest easy knowing I won't stop you. I'm sure there is someone in there that enjoys your company. She huffs in anger and finally leaves me alone. I sink myself back into my thoughts and enjoy the silence now that it's returned. I know that there are many great dungeons near Zenith, but all of them require you to be at least tier 1 to enter. I also know of a few hidden and solo dungeons as well, I'm sure that they will be great for EXP. It really comes down to if I want to get my mana aura after my tier up quest or hit some dungeons to get stronger for it. The gamer in me is telling me to go for the mana aura, but the thinker and planner in me says go for the dungeons. Going for the dungeons and getting stronger for the mana aura is something most wouldn't do, but the gap between me and the top players is big enough for me to do that. So the only question that remains is when I'm all done in Zenith, do I finish my legendary quest or look for something else? I have a chance to free an imprisoned species and learn lore about Ancients world I didn't know before. My mind is made up, when I'm all done in Zenith I'm finishing my legendary quest. I look over to the walls the sun is near and see beautiful shadows being casted, I still have a few hours of daylight left and I should spend more time with my family in Ancients World while I can. I can hear that it's settled down some, but there are still cheers here and yells there, it really is something to experience in this time period. Pubs are some of the best places to hang out. I stop leaning on the wall and head back inside. I look over to my family and see the same annoying girl from earlier. Why would she be over there, she said that she was. Oh, talk about a mood dampener. 
so that must mean she is Snow Princess, didn't think she would be so short after everything I heard about her big personality. I walk over to my family and we make eye contact. What are you doing here? You said that you would be glad I left you alone. Not my exact words, but she got the message. My mom looks over at me with a confused face, I don't think my mom knowing how rude I was to a lady will be good. I sit next to mom and look over at Snow Princess with a slight smile. She begins to look at my face and then my mom's, she goes back and forth between the two. I watch the horror spread across her face, she gets up with a fury. I can't believe you're this horrible man's mom. You told me he was a sweetheart that was the light of your life. My mom looks at Snow Princess with anger, a quality about my mom is if you insult her children you best start praying. Snow Princess sees how badly she screwed up and sits down with an eep. My mom looks over at me looking for an explanation. I just sigh and contemplate what I should say, if I say I was mean to her for no reason I'll get an earful. On the other hand, I could just use Snow Princess's personality against her. I met her at the bank this morning. She lied to a bunch of other players to get the lines shorter, she even tried to add me to her friends list because I had a lot of money. Everything I just said is true, and it's not like mom needs to know about my dismissive attitude towards this annoying girl. I like woman as much as any guy would, but I have a type myself. She is loud, annoying, and demanding. Add that all up you get a high maintenance girl, that's a no from me. I like quiet, sincere, and short-haired ladies. Why short hair, it's a sign of low maintenance. If you think about it, a man's schedule works around the time a woman washes her hair. Short hair equals low maintenance, while this isn't a one-size-fits-all you can tell a lot about a person by the way they act and take care of themselves. I can use all of this against Snow Princess, since she fits the high-maintenance model. I'm not trying to pick on her. I'm trying to get the point across. I don't want her bugging me, and the way she acts bugs me. Is this really true? I didn't peg her for the type to cause such a scene. My mom speaks in a teasing manner, looks like she wants to join in on the fun. We both know that Snow Princess isn't a bad person, just someone that you can only take in small doses. I look over to Snow Princess and I can see frustration and anger along with red cheeks from holding in her voice. I think that's enough for one day, now it's time to have fun with my family. Chapter 78, The Journey to Zenith City 16 Snow Princess isn't what I'd thought she'd be, in all honesty I didn't think she had such a big personality. With a reputation such as hers I'd expect a cunning fighter, not a chipmunk-sized woman. You know Snow Princess, you'll get crow's feet by making faces like that. She looks at me in surprise, it shouldn't come as a surprise that I figured out who you are. It's easy to put together when you have all the pieces, this also means she might know my real name. I doubt mom or dad would call me by my gamer tag, so that means she knows a little bit about me than I do about her. At least in terms of real world identities, the inn and drunks are starting to get rowdy now that the day shifts are getting off. I notice some familiar faces making some particularly nasty scowls in my and Snow Princess's direction. I guess the player who went on the wild goose chase ended up losing some levels and wants some payback, they aren't stupid enough to do anything in city walls. They will try to do something to get revenge though, and I can see some glances coming my way as well. I'm way too high a level to be hurt by these clowns, but I'm always ready to deal with annoying players and their bad attitudes. You seem to have some fans Ms. Princess. I wonder what you're going to do to make them leave you alone, they look ready to bring you back to level zero. She looks to the group of players I'm pointing at and flinches. One even makes a slit throat gesture in her direction, I wouldn't be so obvious when taking revenge. In the end it really won't matter, you'll get your levels back and forget about her. In my opinion you could spend time getting better instead of wasting your time griefing. Time is levels in this world, and levels determine where you stand on the food chain. All players are at the bottom right now, and that includes me. They don't look like they are going to let it go. Do you think you can help me deal with them? 
she isn't asking me that, she is asking the rest of my family. Well played Snow Princess, going over my head and playing on my mom and dad's gratitude. My mom looks over at my dad and they have a mental conversation, I don't know how they can communicate without talking. They have had that strange ability since I can remember, and I haven't met anyone else that can do it. I don't know if we are strong enough to help you. They have better gear and are higher leveled than us. My dad voices his opinion first, but I know what's coming. Mom and dad always repay a debt, it's ingrained in their souls at this point. Although, we owe you very much for helping us and even paying for our gear. Now that surprises me, she used her own hard-earned money to help strangers. Now I feel like I must help, I've never had someone do that for my family. I look over to Snow Princess and I can see she is embarrassed now that a secret has been revealed. I'll help you take care of them, but it'll be wise to find a solution that doesn't involve everyone killing each other. I have to leave for Zenith tomorrow morning and I won't be staying for this to blow up, so we handle it now or not at all. I guarantee my help, but only if she takes care of it now. She looks at me like I grew an extra arm or something. I'm tempted to retract my offer after such a stare. She gets the meaning behind my gaze and gets up and walks over to the players that are staring her down. I keep a close eye just in case things go bad, after a while I see them relax a little. Some even scratch the back of their heads, she is more of a manipulator than I gave her credit for. She must have either offered gold or items, players of Ancients World don't let go for any less. She walks back to us and the players no longer stare at us, she sits back down in her seat and sighs. So what do you have to give for them to leave you alone? There is no way they are letting you off free for your actions. They are my actions too, but I was just someone that got sucked into her plan. Even though it's a horrible excuse it's true. She lays her head on the table in a depressed manner and just stays silent for a few seconds. I promised each of them one gold coin for doing that to them, now I need to come up with seven gold. Problems of the poor are not a concern to people who are rich, but when you come from poverty like I do I can't help myself. I go into my inventory and take out seven gold pieces and put them in front of her. She looks at me like some sort of idiot, I clench my fist in attempt to suppress my rage. I look at her and the gold, she isn't taking it and doesn't look like she will. Just take it you idiot, I said I'd help you and I am. Now I can leave knowing I repaid you for taking care of my family. She looks at the gold for a long time and finally takes it. She goes right over to the players she killed and repays them, they all wear smiles as of nothing happened at all. That's a quality of the poor, if you give them money they usually forget about any wrong you've done them. As I watch them have a conversation, my mom wraps me in a tight hug. I look at her in confusion, she would have done the same thing in my shoes, she is the one I get this from. Thank you for helping her Sarah. She really helped us and I felt bad that I couldn't do anything to repay her. You are the best son in the whole world. She squeezes me even tighter, it's funny because my muscles and skin barely move. I'm too high a level to squeeze to death. I look back over at Snow Princess and she is actually sitting down and talking to them. Seems I don't have to worry about her anymore. My sister throws one of her cards at me to get my attention, she could have just said something. So from what I hear you're heading out tomorrow. If you don't mind I'd like you to teach me some of the things Snow Princess can't. Even if that means now. She is sounding like a true gamer now, she has a thirst to improve and get stronger. I see no reason not to. This could be the only time I see her in Ancient's world in a very long time. I stand up and start heading for the door. I notice she isn't following yet so I turn around and look back at her. You coming or not, we don't have all night you know. She shoots out of her seat and catches up. I proceed to teach her everything I know about the dualist class, and she catches on fast. I even spar with her and use the witness. I keep it in its sheath so none of its skills activate. After seeing her in action I know she will be one of the best players, she has a talent for the dualist class. She heads back before I do, I take a walk around Nelmorp unwinding. 
Soon night comes and now would be a good time to get off, I'm really hungry after all. I make my way back to Giovanni's pub and head up to my room, I can see my family still playing the shattering. I should get a starter deck myself before long, I know where I can get some really good cards. I open the door to my room and notice that it's nicely decorated, even the bed is a regular queen. Giovanni sure does know how to treat customers, I lay in the bed and log off. My gaming pod opens and I'm met by a dark room. I'm immediately hit by hunger, now it's time to have some food. I make my way downstairs and enter the kitchen, I'm not in the mood to cook an entire meal so I'll just make a bowl of cereal. I make a nice big bowl and enter the living room, I place the bowl on the coffee table and turn the TV on with the remote. I switch it to my favorite news channel and it's on a commercial break, I just pick up my bowl and start eating. A minute or so passes and the news comes on with a breaking news segment, what I hear is another piece to the puzzle of what's happening at JNX. Chapter 79, The Journey to Zenith City 17 I watch the breaking news segment with bated breath, I haven't listened to it yet. The reason I'm so into this is because I can see JNX behind the live news reporter. The pretty and young reporter beings the live report now that the introduction is over. Thanks Matt, I'm here at JNX where just earlier today continuous rolling blackouts have hit the local area. The technician says that all power is being diverted to the AWE server room. JNX has refused to answer any questions regarding the blackouts or loss of power in the area. This has been Samantha with breaking news. Rolling blackouts near JNX, if that isn't strange enough a large amount of power is being diverted to the AWE server. I don't know what's going on over there, and I'm worried if they are up to something that can affect the players. This isn't something I have knowledge about, I don't know why the server is causing blackouts. The only thing I can think of is some sort of power surge since so many new players have joined. I continue to listen to the news on Ancients World, I hear something I didn't wish I heard. In other news, reports about the activity in Alsoma have come in from the native players. Many have witnessed monsters of many varieties killing males and capturing female NPCs, if you want more detailed information check the official forums. The rest of the report is to graphic to say or show on air. Looks like many players witnessed the attacks on the country of Alsoma. I'm sure there will be lawsuits for mental trauma for some people, I wouldn't want to see something like that. My cereal is now soggy, I lost my appetite a while ago after seeing this. All the players that once started in Alsoma have been moved to the newly formed Kingdom Avalon, most of the starting cities are full of only players. This new kingdom was formed thanks to the son of Archangel Michael completing a story quest. Many players are wondering about the lore and mysteries that Avalon brings, it's also confirmed that players will need to head to the capital of Avalon for their tier 2 quests. All the players on Ancients World know this, is there going to be any new reports? While the reports I already know about continue, my mind drifts to JNX once again. Why would JNX keep the truth hidden, will it cause some sort of mass panic? That's why the government is cooperating isn't it? The issue is so bad that if the truth leaked out chaos would ensue, it's either that or JNX is bribing the world government. I hear footsteps start coming downstairs and make their way to the living room. I turn to see most of my family, Haley seems to still be on. I hope you guys had fun today, pretty soon you will all start the same grind everyone else is going through. My parents look at me with a smile, and I just remembered that I promised that I'd take mom out and catch up. It's late, but I'm sure there are some places still open. I was just about to bring it up, but both mom and dad get distracted by the news. They come and sit down beside me to listen as well. The news continues to talk about the blackouts and everything else going on. Mom do you still want to go and hang out? Some places are still open. She totally ignores me and just continues to listen, I'll bring it up after they are done catching up with events. I bring my soggy cereal into the kitchen and dump it out, I look around for something good to eat and I come across a Hot Pockets. While not a nutritious meal, it's good and filling. I take them out of the freezer and place some on a plate, 
I toss it into the microwave and just watch it heat up and spin. You better share with the rest of us. I hear my dad call out his desire for me to share with everyone. I put enough on the plate for everyone, just means I won't get as much as I wanted. After a few minutes the hot pockets look ready to eat and I open the microwave to see steam roll off the hot pockets. I take a deep whiff of the scent and my hunger returns. I take the hot plate out and rush to the living room so I don't burn my fingers. I set it on the coffee table and dad starts eating the really hot food. He doesn't seem to care as he just eats them like nerds candies. Slow down dad, save some for the rest of us. Marcus calls out dad's behavior and we soon start to laugh. I hope Haley is having a good time, she is probably looking to get that legendary class as soon as possible. Knowing her she has already left and is on her way to the first objective. I'll eventually have to tell my parents about my class one day, it's not something I can hide forever. I'm just grateful they didn't question how I know all this, if they did I wouldn't have an answer. They will put the dots together that I know more than I let on, but that's after they learn more about Ancient's world. So mom, are we going to hang out like you wanted or what? I ask my mom once again since she isn't so consumed by the TV this time. She looks at me with a smile, but one of slight shame. I haven't seen my mom look like this in a long time. She picks up the remote and turns the TV down so we can talk. I'm going to have to cancel on you sweetie. I have plans and quests to do in Ancient's world, I'm sorry to shrug you off. I understand completely why you didn't want to hang out before. What just happened? Did mom just cancel on me because she wants to play games? We can hang out in Ancient's world when we meet up again. I promise. Wow, I can't believe it. My mom just cancelled on me to play a game. I can't stop myself from laughing and tearing up. Talk about something you don't see every day. Both my parents join in on the funny moment that has happened. Ah, uh -huh. no worries mom. I'm sure that we can do something next time we see each other in Ancient's world. I wipe a stray tear from my eye as I say that, this is going down as one of the funniest moments in my life. Just make sure you get off enough to feed yourselves. I don't want you guys becoming addicts to video games. I say that as my voice shakes from trying to hold in the laughter. I look at both my parents with love, I'm happy that they are getting into Ancient's world seriously. While most of the Adamo family is laughing and having a good time in the real world. Haley is planning a little trip of her own. I'm feeling kind of bad that I'm leaving without saying anything to them, but I do have a friend coming along with me on my quest. So are you going to tell me what we are exactly doing? I get that you want my help, but I have priorities to you know. Snow Princess questions what we are doing. I don't want her knowing I'm heading for a legendary class, if I learned one thing from my little brother it's that you keep important information to yourself. It's not like she is getting nothing out of this either, I promised that I'd help her with any quests after mine. I can see why my brother was so annoyed with you, maybe bringing you along was a mistake. If you want to miss out on all the items and gear then turn around and head back to Nelmorp. If people ever asked where Sarah got his treatment of people sometimes many would question his parents, but in reality he picked up my habit with wordplay and manipulation. It's the one thing that he learned from me he can actually use. I turn my head slightly to the short girl and see her frustrated face. I could see the resemblance when I looked at you too, but now I know there is more in common than just appearances. She begins talking about my family and how beautiful we all are, what I hear next surprises me a little. So does Sarah have a girlfriend? He doesn't seem like the type that can handle most women. I'm intrigued on why she is asking, she never showed any romantic interest in Sarah. If she does have a little crush on him she does a good job hiding it. I just laugh at the thought of my tall little brother with a shorty like Snow Princess. She must know what I'm thinking cause she doesn't look happy. Sarah has a very specific taste in woman, and you are not his type. Most women will never fit his description of what he wants, so don't feel bad. He isn't demanding a lot, just the things he wants are too rare. 
he probably would have a girlfriend if he went outside more often. I start laughing at my little brother's failed love life, he hasn't so much as talked about girls. I'm sure he is still a virgin, if only he got it through his think head that casual encounters are okay. His excuse is that he isn't that type of person, he is the only one missing out. We continue to talk and walk as the night passes, I know mom and dad will be getting back on soon. I don't know Sarah's plans, but he might be taking a break for the night. Chapter 80, The Journey to Zenith City 18 I'm going to take the night off and catch up on the forums, there is news other than what has been talked about. I spend some time just scrolling through threads and reading articles on what's been found and other such things. I'm not tired since I'm sleeping when I play Ancients World, so I'll more than likely be up all night. While I love games and Ancients World, sometimes taking some time off is a good thing. The journey to Zenith City will only be a day of walking, Nelmorp is one of the closest cities to the capital. If players tried to go to their capital cities they would be met with a barrier, the barrier scans players to see if they're high enough level. Works the same way some dungeons do, I had to go through a barrier when entering the dungeon Devil's Willow. I don't have much information on Zenith City since Zenith wasn't my starting country in my old future. I've only been here a few times doing mercenary work, while that was a long time ago I'm positive it will look different since it just got through a war. The players in the country of Zenith lose out on seeing a completely rebuilt capital city. Thinking about capital cities, the country of Avalon popped into existence overnight. That only means the system helped build the new kingdom, this didn't happen when it first came to be. The system must have done this so the players in Alsoma had a place. The timing of the events that have transpired in recent time are looking more and more manufactured on purpose. The quest to defeat the Orc General, and while the story quest was my idea. The country was built at an impossible speed, it makes me wonder what is going on at JNX. I would love to find out myself, but they are in a different state than me. One night isn't enough time to somehow sneak in either. My dad has a saying. No matter how long the truth is hidden, it'll always come to light. You could apply this to JNX, I'm sure there are people digging deep into the truth and they will find it. It does help JNX that the government is on their side, and it will make it harder to find anything. I have a journey with some new friends tomorrow, and while it won't last long, it will be nice to have some company for a change. While everyone in the Adamo family is doing their own things at the moment, there is a secret meeting in the Church of the Dark Ones. The identities of these individuals are hidden behind cloaks, and everyone is silent. I wish to bring up the need for Fenrir's heart. If we can get our hands on it we will be able to revive one of the fallen lords. If Fenrir is as strong as the legends say then we might even be able to revive too. I think this search for the sun is going to end in disaster for us, it's obvious he is protected by the Almighty Father. I fear if we continue interfering with his path, ruin we will befall us. One of the dark cloaked figures speaks about his concerns with the goals of the Church of the Dark Ones. This meeting doesn't happen often, but when it does there is much debate. Another begins to speak in response to this point, the look of his robes say he is a senior member. While you bring up valid points, the sun can be used for the Genesis engine. His bloodline and power will be more than great enough once he fully develops. Wouldn't our Dark Lords want this instead of one or two of them being revived in this world? In the end we all have to come to an agreement, and I say we focus on the Sun. We know he is going to Zenith, the Ritual Masters have revealed this. However, we can no longer locate the person he is supposed to meet. The member with a higher rank than some here brings up his point, and many also agree. Now the council is split, and this isn't good. One person is in a robe with many markers of authority and he begins to speak, he is the leader here. The decision between the heart of Fenrir or the capture of the sun ultimately are out of our sights, so the next best thing is to disturb the Church of Light's efforts as much as possible. My spies have told me that they know nothing about the sun, but they have special investigators digging up hot leads. Perhaps we should get rid of their investigators and hamper their progress. 
many listen as the voice brings up an alternative plan, everyone agrees that this is a better plan than the first two. Soon the meeting concludes and the holograms flicker off. While many organizations of power begin to make plans and such, the person who is more important than he knows has actually fallen asleep. The night passes and my alarm goes off at the time it usually does. I underestimated the softness and comfort of my new bed, and soon I was knocked out. I look to my phone and notice that it's dead, I pick it up and plug it in. I feel how empty my stomach is so I think breakfast is a good idea. I head downstairs into the kitchen and start making a big breakfast. I finish it fast and clean up the mess I made in the kitchen, everyone else is on Ancient's world. This is also a first, I haven't been the only up like this without someone following suit before. No point in waiting around, I head back up to my room now that I'm good and full. I hop into my gaming pod and load into Ancient's world. I wake up in the same bed I logged off on and look out the window. The sun is just starting to rise and I smile at the thought of adventure once again. I make my way down to the breakfast and bar to see if my travel companions are already up. I look around and meet Tokil's eyes. I walk over to him and shake his hand. Good to see you again Tokil, I'm sure that once your dwarf friend gets here we will be ready to go. He looks over to the barrels and I follow his eyes, there is a pile of hungover dwarves. I chuckle looking at the drunks, one of the best people to hang out with are dwarves. They are great conversationalist and know how to have fun, I look forward to traveling with one. I watch Tokil walk over and pick up one of the older looking dwarves, he brings him back over and sets him on a bar stool. This is Thosnal Axiforge, he is the representative that the dwarves have sent. I met him in the coastal city of Resley. I look at the dwarf as he lifts his head from the counter to look at me, he has a hard time keeping his eyes open though. He has a well-maintained beard along with hints of grey here and there, must be around 120. That's considered middle age for dwarves. He puts his hand on his head and groans, you would think dwarves have great alcohol resistance, but drink enough of the 100% pure stuff they have here in Ancients world anybody wouldn't last long. I sit next to Tokil while Thosnal gains his bearings, I look over to the clock and see that it's getting closer and closer to when players log on. Soon the city and restaurants will be full of players again. He lifts his head and looks at me. He begins to rub his beard in a contemplating way. My name is Slayer Zirn, but you can call me Zirn. I'll be traveling with you guys to Zenith, I hope that's all right with you. I hold out my hands and we shake in a normal greeting, he pulls out some flask and takes a long drink. Already drinking, you dwarves sure are tolerant of the stuff. He laughs at my comment. He gestures for me to take a whiff of it, I do and my eyes water. You don't seem like a drinker young man. You can be sure that this will help with my axe splitting headache. It smells like pure alcohol, but it's enchanted to help dwarves clear hangovers. A real dwarf always has one, it's one of the first containers we craft. Talk about an amazing culture, I'm curious about something though. From what Tokil has told me Thosnal is an expert blacksmith, and expert blacksmiths are something official organization don't let out. Both player guilds and NPC-ran establishments would never risk such a rarity. I want to ask him about that, but there will be time for questions later. I look at Tokil and he agrees with my look that it's time to leave. We make our way out of Giovanni's pub and head towards the main gate. This trip won't take long, but having backup for the strong monsters likely hanging around will be nice, I know mom and dad are no longer in Zenith. If they were I would have had a notification on my friends list that would tell me a friend is nearby. Time to finally make it to Zenith City.